All right, this is Bill Kladze here, bringing you an Hour of Devastation draft once again. This pack, the rare Wildfire Eternal, kind of a weird one for limited because the things you're casting for free aren't always going to be that good. Otherwise, it's just a four mana one for. Not going to be the pick here. Fervent Paincaster is solid. Torment of Scarabs has some applications. Vizier of the True, quite aggressive. And Ambuscade. I just love Ambuscade. My personal pick for best common, probably just up there with some of the best rares too. And it doesn't matter if you're aggressive or on defense, it's going to get you a lot of value. As long as you don't get unsummoned or something, but you can usually play around that type of thing. Haven't been blown out too hard yet. So yeah, I'll go with Ambuscade over the next best card here, I think, is the Fervent Paincaster. And in pack two, here's an interesting one, Hazard's Undying Fury. I haven't yet put this in a deck I've built, but I've seen it do some good things. Maybe more of a sealed card. And it's not green, and we don't see a green card here. But we've got Doomfall, which is fine, but not premium removal. We've got an Uncommon Missing and a Torment of Venom. So the best creature is Dauntless Aven. Maybe if you really love two drops, you could take the Spellweaver Eternal. And those are both better picks than the Deserts at this point. So I'm going to go with the Torment of Venom, though. Solid removal. Uh, a heavy commitment to black, but it's worth it. And what do we get here? Uh, two commons missing. Hard to speculate what colors those might be, but Maybe green is disappearing here, and the black's not great either. Resolute Survivors is a fine card, double off color for us. Unconventional Tactics can get there in the late game. And if we just want to go for pure power, we could take the Survivors. And if we want to kind of stay on color with Ambuscade and Torment of Venom, we could go for this Sidewinder Naga, which is far less exciting. You know, I'm going to go for this Resolute Survivors and see what <laughs> that holds open. If you get a couple of these passed back to back and then you really commit too hard to your first few picks, you could end up with a disaster. Okay, so Bloodwater Entity would be our, shoot, fifth color, um, but it's a fine uncommon. Dauntless Aven could fit well into a red-white deck, and then the creatures are kind of drying up here besides that. I'm going to go with the Dauntless Haven. We don't see any good black cards or green cards in this pack. Maybe something like a blue-red deck is, is open, or just a, what, a white whatever deck. Yeah, we'll go with this. And yeah, thank goodness we kind of dropped those first two colors. It's uh, impossible to know if they'll be open in the first two picks, but that's why you got to kind of speculate. I like survivors here over the the rest of the white and red cards. But it's a great sign that fifth pick were being passed this many cards including some good ones like the survivors. Need some two drops to fill it in, but if we can get some gust walkers out of the last pack or some other things, then we'll be in good shape. Desert of the True, perfect time to pick this up since We've got a lot of commitment to white here, and it seems like white might be one of the more open colors. Another unconventional tactics. Sometimes it feels like these go later than they should, but a deck doesn't need many more than one of them. One is kind of enough, but I will take it here. It's unclear how many zombies red white is going to get. There's a few red zombies running around. But let's see, aerial guide or Survivor's Encampment. It's funny how the playables seem to dry up here in any given color. I, I guess we have a pretty good black filler card, a couple of solid blue cards, some unexciting white cards and a decent filler green card. I'll take the Aerial Guide. Kind of funny direction this draft is going. Vanilla 2-2? Two, two? 
it's late enough in the pack that we kind of have to be happy with it. Too bad it wasn't just a random zombie. But black has the two drop zombie Kenra. Kenra Eternal. All right, another desert for us. Kindled Fury and Spellweaver Eternal. If that blue-white deck is open, or even a blue-red deck, or heck, a Jeskai deck, then maybe that could be a thing, but we have an on-color desert here. So we can just be happy with that. Passing to Doc Fruzzi. Haha, ha, you care. Al Candle. Speedy. Lamp a lot. Colpan. And someone who lost their avatar, Kesset. That's what happens if you really break the rules a number of times in Magic. They'll just take your avatar and never give it back. It's rough. Just a few more picks here. Renunciation is fine and a pretty aggressive deck. I don't think I've played it yet, but you know it's not the worst thing in the world. If you have a lot of non-creature spells, you don't want this one, but if you have a bunch of creatures that you need to attack in with, then you've definitely got reason to play this. All right, someone's taken a basic land rather than these pieces of nonsense. We'll go for the dutiful servants. The only thing that makes any kind of sense. And someone really is trying to feed us white-blue. Not many good cards, but, oh wow. Interesting options here. At, on this table, we might be able to wheel a Resolute Survivors. Unlikely, because that one pack we had so many white cards. And Earthshaker Kenra is just going to be better compared to our other two-drop Jackal Warrior. Not strictly better, it has one toughness, but the rest of it just looks too good to pass here. Definitely going to be the pick over the survivors. A shame that we're getting it in the same pack, because I'd love both. And then got some options here. Sun Scourge Champion, although not the most aggressive, still fine card. Comes back as a 4-4. Four, four. For pretty cheap, a 4 mana eternal with the cost of just discarding something. Then we've got Gilded Ceridon which is supported by a couple deserts so far, Sandblast. Quality removal, but not necessarily on offense. I'll go with this champion here. Ooh, Kenra Scrapper, that's a good one to see. I'm actually not sure between that and the Oketra's Avenger. Based on the number of three drops we have, we're looking for more two drops. In general, the Scrapper is a bit more powerful of a card, but Oh, Catcher's Avenger hits harder earlier. And we have a bit more commitment to white at this point. Mostly, you just need the, the two drops. Kind of a crazy draft. You rarely get this many of a certain uncommon passed around. And just, it seems to be always with an unconventional tactics. And a couple of those disappeared out of the first pack, so who knows. Hopefully they're often white black and not interested in our survivors but we're getting past these from both directions so definitely a pick here over another desert and out of this pack very expensive but the cycling does mitigate that somewhat we get six mana four four flyer huge stats really hard to contend with late once uh, your opponent stabilized this can tilt things back in your favor. And we already have two deserts, so yeah, we'll go for this. All right, what are we looking for here? We can put our tricks over there. We've got a few nice creatures on the curve. Got a couple good tricks, and we just need to fit uh, fill in with some more two-drop creatures mostly, and just good creatures in general. Here, I always forget, but this guy is a zombie, the frontline devastator. Any creature that has this blue armor type wrappings, I guess, for the Eternals 
is going to be a zombie. And that's fine with the unconventional tactics. Pretty aggressive card. We're also trying to prioritize things that exert. Now that we have triple resolute survivors, if we get a couple of those in play at the same time, things get pretty crazy. And this is a nice card with it too. The Dauntless Aven that untaps anything that exerts. It's great. Pseudo vigilance on itself. All right. Well, someone or some ones have picked up that white was a bit open pack one, so they are starting to take all of the cards we want. That's okay. There's worse cards than the lizard. Act of Heroism, Saving Grace. I found that Saving Grace can be kind of like an offensive fog. And if you really want one of your creatures that's locked down to die, like if it's tapped somehow, or has a pacifism on it, or you just want your Earthshaker Kenra to die to bring it back, then you can put Saving Grace on it. Pretty good. And I'm happy to pick it up here. We already have one of each of the other tricks, so we're not interested in that. Disposal Mummy's good, better than anything else here for our deck, but could be a sideboard card, another saving grace, uh-oh. And some other stuff we're not really interested in. Crash Through could be good with a bunch of 3-3s three without Trample, but never that excited to play it. Steadfast Sentinel's fine, better than the Dutiful Servants. So what are we looking for? Glory Bringer out of the next pack? Maybe Oketra or just any efficient card with Exert? I should qualify that. Any efficient card with Exert in our color. So Sheltered Thicket might be our best option here because there's really not much. Sacred Cat, there's no Exerter besides the Uncropped Champion. Maybe if that wheels, the Sheltered Thicket could help splash it. And then we have Minotaur Sure Shot. Yeah, really unexciting pack for us. Really not excited about this. Because we're doing okay for the, the three drops. No, I'll take the Sheltered Thicket. A little better here. We get a fine removal spell in the cast out. Vizier of Deferment has some upside in this deck with uh, the Exerters we have. But yeah, we're just going to slam the cast out. Deals with a bunch of gods we might not be interested in facing. Compulsory Rest, uh, Inno Catcher's Name, and Takrop Elite. That fits in again here with our Dauntless Avens and our Resolute Survivors. Happy to pick that up. True Hard Duelist. Not an exerter, but a, an efficient two-drop creature. Better than anything else there. A few more creatures, and these combat tricks and pump spells are going to help win us some games. I'm actually pretty happy about this Defiant Kenra now, given how few two-drops we have. Champion cast out. Throne of the God Pharaoh. That's going to be awkward with these Dauntless Avens. Not sure it's the card for us, but Retcrop Spearmaster is always good. And it's a better aggressive three drop than like Disposal Mummy or anything else like that. Pick that up here. Anointed Procession doesn't help us enough, but it's always an exciting card. And just a Minotaur Sure Shot. Yeah, if we had more desert synergies, we could even look again at this Painted Bluffs, but we don't really. So we'll take a random Sure Shot. And a Brute Strength. Good trick. Better trick with some First Strike and things, but it's not bad in this deck. Give your Devastator some Trample, or let your survivors survive a, a clash with another 3-3. Three, three. So the tricks are looking a bit better, and we could certainly play some more of these three-drop creatures. Saving Grace, 
That's another one we could put in here. Playing two saving graces would be kind of crazy. But we could also play Jeru's Renunciation. At this rate, I mean, it could buy us a free turn of attacks or take one turn off our opponent's clock if we tap their two biggest things that are threatening us, tap a lifelinker. That's the kind of trick we need. All right, what, el what else do we need? Thresher Lizard or Honed Kopish? With the few flyers we have, Honed Kopish looks strong. Make some stuff just a bit bigger. I always like a lizard, but it seems like we're being really stocked up on the three drops and don't need more. Supply Caravan is also kind of good, but not that exciting. We'll take the Kopish. Sacred Cat comes back. All right, looks like that's all we're going to get. Insider might be good. The Mummy's pretty good in our deck. We don't have enough mummies to really take advantage of Inno Catcher's name, but here's a good pump spell, the Pursue Glory. Randomly a damaging desert, the Sun Scorched Desert, and we don't want to play against this. All right, so we even need some cuts now. What do we cut? Probably cut one of these four drops. We don't. Would we rather have the Sentinel or the Sparring Mummy? With the exerters we have, I like the Sparring Mummy. The two Dauntless Avens are going to be really busy to untap everything every turn. And then the two drops are pretty good. Is What's better here, the Act or the Renunciation? I think the Act is a bit better now that we have some one drops. Then we could cut... Sacred Cat, although I'm not excited about making that cut. I'd rather cut Pursue Glory here. All right, some cyclers. Pretty low curve, especially since this can cycle from time to time. But is it low enough to go 16 lands when three of our lands cycle? Or should we make one more cut, like the Minotaur Sure Shot? Yeah, with three lands that cycle, I like 17 lands, even in a low curve deck like this. So what are we doing? 17-7. Sounds like a 10-7 deck to me, if I've ever seen one. And then, just play all our cycling lands to help get there. All right, the off-color cycling land. I'm a little worried about that one, but not so worried. It's just gonna make our draws a bit more consistent and we won't run out of stuff to do as early if we play that. All right, let's try this out in some matches. Round one versus Nasher. Keepable hand here, we've got both colors. And we've got a decent curve. Definitely save the cast out over playing it. Or cycling it, rather. Just never play it. That's what I mean. Avenger. Scary against some minus one, minus one counter thing that they could have. Huh. Yeah, the Emmet Eternal's kind of nuts. Well, shoot, how do we deal with that thing? besides playing a bunch of spells. Our best bet is to ignore it, I think. Play a three drop. Let the thing hit us and then exile it next turn. Yeah. Because turn three, Emmet Eternal is, is the hardest to deal with, for sure. Unless you have the removal spell right away, and we kind of do double block that'd be <laughs> that wouldn't be so good now what does this say when it deals combat damage 
to a player, remove all the counters from it. So what happens when we redirect? It's dealt to the creature instead. So if we make that thing a 3-3 and make something big enough to block it, maybe that's good enough. Well shoot, now we have to worry about this tenacious hunter. Do we have to cast out that thing? Just to attack? Oh, what a <laughs> what a day. Yeah, I think we do. I think we have to get rid of this tenacious hunter. And we don't really exert this turn. It gets in a couple more damage and gains some life, but reduces the clock by that whole extra turn there. Yeah, the Amid Eternal just has to keep attacking. A race if I've ever seen one. And it's a zombie, so even the Bone Slasher can block here. Why not? There's a bit of a combo, though, with um, Saving Grace and O Catcher's Avenger, if you exert it. So let's try that out here. Let's just exert the Avenger. Well, I suppose we don't even need to exert it unless they have a pump spell. Right, so we get in three here. I'm trying to think, maybe we should have played the Kenra first main. The one spell they could have is um, a plus two. And then the Resolute Survivor still survives. Yeah, let's just attack with both. And we can put the saving grace on the survivors. Then even if they have the, the one black spell, it doesn't deal with it. If they have a removal spell for the resolute survivors, that kind of sucks. But at least every spell we play is one less damage we take that next turn from the Amit. Nine ten. We're getting really close to lethal next turn. If only this guy exerted or did anything useful. Just a the most vanilla creature in the whole block of Amonkhet. The only thing that would make it more vanilla is if the creature type was just jackal. Not even warrior, because I guess warriors have some applications in other sets. Yeah, they come in for an attack. Baiting this thing to attack every turn so it isn't a blocker for us. No, don't kill the resolute survivor. Can we keep dodging the black removal here? Yeah, they do. They do. We would have had the win this turn, too, judging by the brute strength. Eight. Pretty close. We can go for the win next turn. I mean, we get in five here, put some at six, play the Takrop Elite. Um, I guess... I guess we hold on to the thicket. But even that, take a look at the deck here. I mean, there's some three drops we could draw. Like unconventional tactics. There's very little we could draw that costs one mana. Yeah, let's just play the thicket. We're trying to win next turn. And I don't want to be stuck drawing a spell here without being able to cast it. If we draw a land, then yeah, I guess we'd cycle there and we'd have four mana left over and we're going to use two of it. Trial of Strength. I think we can beat that. And certainly they... Oh, they don't attack here. All right, looks like we shouldn't have played that, but is this still lethal? It should be, unless they have some removal for the 
uh, Talkrop Elite or a Fog. A Fog would be the worst. Don't see how we ever beat that here, though. What are we afraid of? From one black and one green. Let us just trample over. All right, and that should do it. Even our Kenra lives. Oh, if they have fog, though, <laughs> gosh. Destin, they have indestructible, but that's not gonna let them live. Cool. Oh, we should have taken a look at the top card of our deck. Saving Grace, what a good card. We don't necessarily need more than one, but I am tempted to bring in some kind of other spell here. Some cheap spell that lets us make that amid a bit smaller each time we play it. Like the Renunciation keeps it from hitting us. The Life Gain is good too. Spearmaster, Sparring Mummy. And this plays well against uh, Destined to Lead. Anytime they're trying to lead, we can tap that creature. So we could win that way. And we're going to be on the draw, so what about taking out just a random land and putting the Renunciation in? Take out a red land, one that kind of screws our mana up anyway. Go down to 16. All right. Well, we're definitely in for cycling the desert. We have plenty of lands in this opening hand. We've got all of our tricks. So we're looking for creatures more than anything. Angel, does that change whether or not we want to cycle the desert? I don't think so, since we want to draw things to do right now. Let's see what happens. I would guess they don't block here, but if they do, it's an easy act of heroism. Trade that for their three drop creature and then play a planes. Next turn, we've got the Devastator. They get their Amid Eternal out on time. Do we want to trade two for one with this thing? We'd even get in a damage. I don't think we want to do that. We want to we want to get them attacking with it to get in a race situation again. Cuz they're going to come in for 4. We have 5. We're threatening 5 on the swing back. It's another tenacious hunter, fine. Ooh, they're not going to attack. I like that. If we cycle the desert, we don't have an extra pump for the Devastator. So, what do we do? Just attack with the Devastator? Anything that attacks is going to die to this. We could trade two for two here. Or three for two, rather. Ah, that's okay. There's some chance they that a creature gets in for free. <laughs> they must see there's a pump here. Oh, okay, so a creature kind of gets in for free. I'm going to use Brute Strength. And then one more damage, or Cycling the Desert. Rather cycle the desert. Cool. So next turn we've got a 4-4 flyer that they could easily have removal for. And they're they're on the defensive. Works for me. The one green pump spell. And they didn't attack, so 
It looks like they're trying to block here. Yeah, what happens if they block? All right, let's go for it. At worst, we trade our Devastator for a Pump Spell. And at best, we trade it for their best creature, or something that's kind of like their best creature. And now we can play Tokrop Elite. Ooh, it might have even been better to play the Inciter there, since the Elite doesn't get in past the Spider. <laughs> Nothing gets in past two Spiders. That's kind of cool, though. We could go Insider and Aven, and then hold off on the Angel. Or we could just play that Angel. I guess I like that. More mana efficient. And here's a Cycling Stinging Shot. OK. So they're not going to save that for the Angel. They must have another answer. Oh, wow. Well, we don't have a zombie yet. What happens if we attack with the Angel? We kill one Obelisk Spider, and they both sort of get in there and help kill the Angel. It's really going to be difficult to attack past these spiders. All right, let's hold off a turn. So we can use tactics to probably save the angel. Lethal sting. Okay, nothing saving the angel from that. Do they really want to trade this with the Avon? We might be interested in a trade. Yeah, I think we are here. It's <laughs> the last turn they can't hold up indestructibility for it. And they've got two reach things. All right. They've had some good stuff. The only thing they're missing, uh, and yeah. Maybe we should have done the tactics that turn. I was going to say, the only thing they're missing is a bunch of land. But now they have it. Now they have everything they'll need for the rest of the game. And we just keep getting nonsense here. All right, does this get in? We have run out of stuff to do, and they have a lot of stuff to do. So what do we do? Give this guy haste? Get in some damage? No, we, we've got to build up a better board before doing anything else. It might start with a zombie to get back the tactics. Oh boy, they get to see our exciting hand here. They're even wasting cards. But it doesn't matter, because their board is so much better. Yeah, take another hit. Too many creatures to deal with. Draw land. Even that, it's it's not enough. It's just not enough. 
Anything else we could draw here? Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll give him this game and try to win the third game with a more aggressive start. So what can we do? I mean, we need four power creatures or things that can make our creatures bigger. Sacred Cat's not as good. Pursue Glory. If we get a little bit wide, that could help us out with some Dauntless Avens and whatnot. I still like Renunciation. All the tricks are good. Horned Copish makes the survivors bigger. <laughs> and that's pretty good. Bloodlust Insider leads to some of our best starts. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think we're we're doing the right things here. Just need to make some kind of cut. Like sparring mummy, I guess. Try to win earlier than that. Good hand for it. We've got planes into True Heart Duelist and Sacred Cat and Hone Kopish. Nice, nice draw. The most aggressive start. So we just need to draw a land and a four drop and then will be there. Well, that kind of counts. But if we draw an untapped land this next turn, in the next two cards, we can cycle this, and then their start's just so bad. All right, punishing a, a slow start here. The desert's proving their worth. We know they could have a removal spell for flyers for green, but it's much less likely they can deal with this sacred cat right away. They must have a couple spiders in hand. And just no black mana, no third mana at all. Awkward draw. We don't have any exert, but we're pretty safe to cycle here. And that might just about do it. All right, so punished a, not a greedy keep, but like a, a risky keep, I'd say. Oh no, they're back up to, life goes on, really? So card advantage wasn't a problem for them. I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish here, though. Aren't they just dead to our exert? They could block this. No, they're not quite dead to it. Unless we play another Resolute Survivors, then they are dead here. Because they block three. Yep, we just exert. Untap our exerter. And that is exact damage, no matter how they block here. All right, we make it past round one. I've never seen Life Goes On played, but if they really know they win the late game, they can trade some early cards for long longevity, and they're not going to gain the life from the spider until, until after they take the combat damage. All right, see you in the next match. Round two versus Ander, Lizarakoa, and we will, I guess, keep this hand. No white.
Snow White yet, I should say. Yeah, so it was going to be Honed Kopish, but now we just play Desert. Make sure we can get a fighting force as soon as possible. Watch we draw planes. No? Okay, so we're doing we're doing the right stuff here. Smoothly curve into our flyers, cycle the sheltered thicket, and then play and equip Honed Kopish on turn 5 or something. Ooh, Harsh Mentor. So that punishes our Honed Kopish. That's for sure. The other thing here is they might be tempted to trade off with the Duelist, and we could make that a little better for us if we equip Honed Kopish. But... And then we even have the Sacred Cat to play. But then they just take three. Yeah, let's attack instead. And then we take five, because we're taking two off the Honed Kopish. Because that's an ability. Uh, the equip. Yeah. So we're giving up damage and taking more damage. We'd rather just keep curving out. I'd expect them to attack in here. Although if they do come in with the Mentor, they're going to make it unblockable. No, they're not. So why are they leaving back the Initiate and not offering that trade? I think it's because they're offering the trade with their better creature, with our better creature, and they're holding back the Duelist to block that. Ah, we'll take it. We have to trust our decks more aggressive. It's a pretty aggressive one. Now they really have to <laughs> block this thing. Oh no. They're going to kill the Avon? They're farming it. But now we have some good blockers for the next turn, and we play Takrop Elite. Still need some of that white mana. And if we do draw planes exactly, we can get Sacred Cat and Survivors into play. Otherwise, I guess it's uh, not going to be that much stuff. So hard to manage this. So we want to put the um, Harsh Mentor first. And we actually get it, so we prevent four, kill the Mentor, which is keeping us down. And then they play Oracle's Vault, of all things. It's getting a little... It's getting weirder and weirder all the time. Turns out they're just a late-game deck, not a red aggro deck. Okay. We could exert there, no real reason to, unless we expected them to target Tawkrop Elite this next turn. Doesn't help us that much. Uh, and they are. <laughs> and they are. So what can we do here? Three, four, five can't really do everything, but we could attack with the survivors, and I'd be happy enough trading with both creatures, or just getting in for damage, and then cycle this, play Defiant Kenra, I guess we could have cycled first if that was our plan, but next turn we'll be able to attack through this Pathmaker Initiate. So they exile a planes, they get to play it. Pretty good luck with the vault there. As opposed to exiling a sand strangler off the top. All right. So what now? What next? Well, 
why don't we just play the Kenra? Make it so Pathmaker Initiate can't block. And get in for a bunch here. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I still think we do not exert. Save that for next turn. And they have a trick here. It's a shame. Pretty good one. Oh no, and something else to kill the um, Defiant Kenra. They're just going to fling it at the Defiant Kenra, yeah. Good turn for them, used up a few cards. But we can assemble a bit of a blocker that at the same time attacks through the Strangler. Can't attack through that Ceridon until we get a flyer out. No wonder they killed our flyer when they had the chance. Don't want this to die to Blur of Blades immediately so we can re-equip. Mid-range desert decks getting us to find Kenra. That's a good one for them to find just because it's free. Geez, two harsh mentors out of one pack of Amonkhet? Huh, saving grace. I like that here. It kills our Earthshaker Kenra. And what do we untap? Something like True Heart Duelist? It gets in three damage with the Dauntless Aven. Can't possibly kill anything, right? The Harsh Mentor blocks this. No, well, okay, so they block our two biggest ground creatures with these two. Yeah, that doesn't make much sense. We should just attack with the Aven. Hope they don't find an answer for it. And what they could do here is attack with the Ceridon to stop the Earthshaker from blocking, but we could fog and make the Kenra die anyway, play it the next turn, and then get in for a big turn. Vizier of the True, with no exerters on the field, so it's still pretty good for us. Come on, one power would have been nice. They're at one. And they get to play another Gilded Ceridon. Okay. And whatever they drew for the turn. They might want to use Farm to Market. Draw something better. They're going to draw that one removal spell. But Blur of Blades doesn't do it since we equipped what we needed to the Dauntless Haven. Discarding a few lands. And even a lot of direct damage doesn't do it, because Saving Grace helps out the Aven. I don't see how this is too scary for us. We'll just take four. Heart Piercer Manticore. I like it. So they sack something, they target the Dauntless Aven, and then Saving Grace wins it. I don't even know what they sacked. <laughs> the thing lives because it was three power. All right. We got there. Kind of cool. So another red-white deck, except their red-white deck is a lot more mid-range or even late game. Oracle's Vault, Farm to Market, plenty of rares and Gilded Ceridons and Sand Stranglers. So we have to get under them somehow. 
get more damage in faster. Flyers are good, but they have like fling. Some other nonsense. All right, given that, we can put in our second saving grace. That was pretty annoying for them to deal with. The tap effects aren't as good. They're still fine. And then we can take out the old sheltered thicket, now that we're on the draw again, for lack of a better card to take out. Ooh. So we're on the draw, and we have cast out to cycle, and we have a two drop, if we can find that mountain. Yeah, I actually like this hand. I don't like it, but I think it's keepable. Yeah, we should still probably cycle cast out right away. Okay. Avenger just threatens more damage. If we really knew we were trying to block the Mentor, we could play the Kenra there, but we've got some life gain and stuff. Yep. Take the hit. So Harsh Mentor doesn't punish Embalm effects. That's a plus. The only way we get damage in here is by exerting, so it's nice to have our survivors out first. Good draw. Or, you know, not so good of a draw. Those sideboard cards, their deck was already pretty good. Now they have access to these tier one sideboard cards against us. Get ready for a crazy match. Here we want to be the most mana efficient, so we get up to five mana, we can play two things. Can't beat this though, too many, too many two for ones. Shoot, we'll just have Oketra's Avenger back on defense for the Sand Strangler. Keep an eye on what they're vaulting. Never a miss. Wow, their deck's just strictly better than ours. They have every card we have that's good, <laughs> and they have Sand Strangler and a bunch of other rares. Strictly better deck. Land would have been good. Starting with one land, though, we can't ask for everything. Can't have it all. All right, can they miss here? It's possible. Just get in two. We might be able to gain some life. One life. <laughs> Unless we draw the third Resolute Survivors. Ooh, that's tough to attack past. Yeah, so they can... We can block the Granitic Titan and take four, so we'll be up to five. Yeah, our best bet here is to play and equip the Kopish. Oh no, we're dead. <laughs> This harsh mentor just killed us. It didn't actually kill us, but we won't be at high enough life to survive an attack for two or four. Oh, that's ridiculous. You know what? With double harsh mentors, we have to take out Honed Kopish. It's just going to be too much of a liability. Put in our land again. Yeah, that seems fine put in our land on the play, we'll be on the play, and then get some life back. Yeah, good hand. Better with the two drop. But land works just as well there. No cyclers. Defiant Kenra. 
What's better, unconventional tactics or Sun Scourge champion? Yeah, let's not even bluff it. We could brute strength in and get our cat back. But that's not the biggest thing we have to get through this game. Just play the champion. Okay, so they must have farm here. It's not a really big deal. Still have a pretty easy attack. So they take it. Then what do we do? We could... Oh, you know what we should have done there? I was afraid of farm, but we could have done unconventional tactics on the cat. And even then, it would have been fine, because we play the cat back. Ah, let's just build a bigger board here. It's awkward not to get the value off of the um, tactics when this is one of our few mummies, but Sacred Cat's a mummy too when it comes back. And this puts more pressure on the board. Heart Piercer Manticore, great. Just as a 4-3 though, so it's not... It's not ridiculous, it's just kind of regular. Just a regular level. So they could go ahead and block the champion with the manticore and then we brute strength it up to trade. Limits their board, helps us get a zombie for the the thing and it gets in plenty of damage so they are at eight we can bring this guy back and we have the white mana to bring back the tactics and that's going to be scary for them to deal with <laughs> they get us down to 25. ah don't need to do that first when we have all these tricks in our hand farm the mummy yep yeah, all of our tricks in hand. Tell you what we don't need. Two red. We've already played one of our red tricks. Ah, we don't really need either of these lands. Back up to 30. Blur of blades, so we only gain, <laughs> so we only gain three. <laughs> you monster! Oh no! Oh no! What have they done? All right, we'll take it. All right, what do we want to draw more than anything? no idea resolute survivors that's pretty good we get it we get in six damage here it doesn't exert and we might as well attack in case they play a desert and they get some damage in they have to do this and then they're just dead next turn to any number of things. Wow, yeah, we bring back Sacred Cat along with the tactics. We just exert the survivors. We have a three power dude. And we're at 28 life, so if that wasn't a one-sided game, I don't know what is. Awesome, on to the finals. The finals of a single elimination Hour of Devastation Draft, and we've got a pretty good hand here. A little light on creatures, but any creature we draw gets better by that Kopesh. Lands are fine, I guess, if we draw towards our six-drop angel. Oh no, they're going to steal our creature here, and then we have nothing left. 
99% of our hand is in this one card. The rest could be whatever. And they're going to steal it. Just the, the linchpin to our combo of attack with creature to do damage. They're like, wow. <laughs> the remaining five cards they have are so bad. And it's a good one for them to know about, too. Saving Grace. Kind of hard to play around, but it's much better if you know about it. Oh no, not this guy again. We could brute strength it on, on our turn so it gets smaller. Just everyone has these Amid Eternals. And on turn three, no less. So, what do you think they had that they wanted to not play Lord of the Accursed first? Something that costs more than one blue. Probably some indestructible spell. That's weird. Or just counter magic. But yeah, this game this game's over. might have been over if they just didn't even have lay bear but it's definitely over uh we don't have a reset effect like a an hour of revelation or whatever the hour is that destroys all permanents in play that would be the one way we could claw back into this we just don't have it here okay but we're not giving up exert here Try to survive the hit this next turn somehow. Sparring mummy to untap our elite. Our elite fighting force. And then not dead on board, right? We could take a hit of seven and then attack back for seven or eight. Ouch. Hour of Glory, that's another good hour. You've got the phantom snake in the background of this art, like Ronus's father is looking at him getting from the background, getting killed by the scorpion god. All right, no time for that now. We've got Amid Eternal coming in. Where's our exerter when we needed it? No problem, no problem. We've still got this. We play survivors, because that's what we are. And then saving grace on the mummy. To live one more turn. In fact... Yeah. Maybe there is a chance this game. I mean, they have to have nothing. But the Sparring Mummy survives the, the Amid Eternal. That's fine. That's totally fine. It doesn't survive the hit by both of them. It takes six. It's too bad. If we had one more mana, it would survive. But it does survive this. If it doesn't get bounced or countered. And the trigger does not go on. It does not do damage to us, so it doesn't get to remove all its minus one, minus one counters. Oblivion, discard two. Yeah, with pleasure. What do we want to get rid of? Assuming we're drawing nothing, we probably get rid of uh, the Brute Strength and the Resolute Survivor. So 
Survivor's good though. Like it's one way we can gain life. Definitely getting rid of the the strength. Yeah, let's let's get rid of those two. And no life link on the board, so that doesn't help out too much. And what do we equip here? Just to let either creature survive an attack by the Emmet. We should equip there. Can't attack because they can give this guy menace. Indestructible? Bantu's Last Reckoning. That's a combo if I've seen one. Oh, wow. All right. Mr. Amid Eternal <laughs> with no lands to untap. Come on, Triskaidekaphobia off the top. Oh, the Afflict. Wasn't even thinking about that. Just never blocked it yet this tournament. Okay, round two. Let's one more time with feeling. All right, Desert of the True. This hand is great. We've got Oketra's Avenger. They're going to play some kind of sweet blocker for it that we're going to get past with the uh, Eternal and then probably run out our thicket. And even better, they're mulliganing to six, so we've got a real shot here. Just kept the deck as it was. Yeah, see, look at that sweet blocker. They're feeling so good about getting in there. Or rather, us not getting in there. But really, it's only five damage, so I don't know how we're going to get the rest of the damage in here. Now, target creature, so it doesn't automatically target one of your opponent's creatures, you have to select it. And just come in there, so an early start here, but all of our creatures are really uh, weak to this festering mummy on the field. Kind of depending, wow, we're getting all our deserts out, which we don't need. We might go ahead and use Saving Grace. Yeah, this is weird, but they're going to make this block, and then Saving Grace protects us so that the, um, the other guy doesn't die. And we don't mind if the Earthshaker Kenra dies. Because we can just bring that back later. In fact, that's a good reason to play out these deserts. Wish it was untapped so we could play another creature there. But what are you going to do? Edifice also kind of shuts down the Kenra. But again, what are you going to do? We're just going to lose three life every time we can here. And get our biggest baddest creatures in play as soon as we can and it doesn't matter what exerts for the survivors so that's nice the edifice can only stop one thing from attacking but yeah off, off their mulligan their torment's a little less threatening you could just take 15 damage off it and then discard stuff later oh come on <laughs> uh we don't need that. No difference playing the Kopish or holding it for the purpose of the torment. Bantu's Last Reckoning. These wrath effects are so unbeatable for a deck like this.
see if they let us get our attack in here. Oops. It should go to second main pretty quickly. There we go. Edifice and a wrath effect. That's going to slow our aggression down. We could try to confuse them here, take another hit of three. We're not going to be able to take infinite hits of three, but we want to get up to six mana because that gives us a few more creatures. Oh well. Eventually we'll sack the Kopish and then maybe start drawing lands that we don't need anymore. Oh, so they want the Dauntless Haven to attack. Because they're going to bounce it? Or just... yeah, okay. No attacks here. Fortunately, we can play both of these things out. Try to get too much for them to deal with. Now they could consign us, which takes out our Angel and means we can discard any further lands to the Torment. No, we still want one land. We still want our one land. So ridiculous. And they even have the um, one mana left over for the Edifice. Great. Lose three life. At this point, we do want to do that over the Honed Kopish. Because we need that Honed Kopish to get in an attack with the Kenra. So what do they do now? They could stop the Kenra from attacking and take four. Get one on this, one on this. It's going to be a close one. Torment of Scarabs has single-handedly done 15 to us. Uh, what about discarding the Sacred Cat versus playing it here? I guess we play it, because we could take that one last hit. Down to two. Or we could just sack the cat here. Won't make much of a difference. Right, because this is upon entering the battlefield. If we get that uh, sixth mana, we play this, and that might be enough attackers. Ruin Rat, that's a pretty good one. Dagger, I'm not sure what that does, except makes it a little rougher on our life total. Yeah, let's take the life. Let's take the hit. Get this guy back. It has haste. Everything here can attack. Uh, I don't think they're dead because they can stop. We want to make it so they have to block with the Lord of the Accursed, though. They have to block something big like Defiant Kenra. Because then we don't die to the Afflict from the Dagger, we'll have at least two blockers. Yeah, let's stop that from blocking. Close game. We took 18 from Torment of Scarabs. <laughs> yep, that just happened. So now what are you going to do, opponent? Balls in your court. Right, because they could stop the sacred cat from attacking. And that dies. They could stop the big guy from attacking. And that lives, but they survive at one. 
and they lose the Lord of the Accursed, and the Avens untap some stuff to block. It's got to be the, the Kenra. Or the, well, one of the Kenras, one of these jackal warriors. And we still could be dead here, but we have plenty of stuff to sacrifice to the Torment next turn, and plenty of flyers to get in there, turn after turn. And then, yeah... Stopping the Ruin Rat from blocking means if somehow they get the kill the Sacred Cat, we can't do much there. So what can't we attack with? Well, we're definitely attacking with everything else. It's hard to imagine them finding flying, but we could untap both of the Avon. Yeah. They need to draw land too. Yeah, let's untap both of the Avon if they have that like one cartouche of whatever. Kill us. We go up to three. Awkwardly. Because they can deal with one flying blocker with the um, Edifice of Authority. So we need two, and we already have one ground blocker, so it's not much difference there. And they get a land. So is this going to be the big torment for five? I'm not sure if that does it. Oh no, what are they going to... What are they going to do, kill our other thing? Oh god, it's exact damage here. And they just needed any land, and they, they were even kind enough to tell us what they needed. Shoot. Mr. Rat coming in. Wait. It doesn't have flying. I'm not, I'm not afraid of this rat. It doesn't even have flying. Right? We can just block the, um, the rat with our Earth Shaker. Okay, <laughs> I had flying on my mind so much that not that one, they needed another blue. Oh, hmm. Trying to think what land would do it for them. Has to be one of the spell lands. But they did use all their mana this turn, so. Sure. And that should do it for us. We sack the cat and attack for some damage and go to game three. I could have sacked the, the Avon there too. All right, so we kept the deck largely the same. We're going to be back on the draw so we can get rid of Sheltered Thicket. Sun Scorched Desert might have been what we needed. Uh, disposal Mummy could come in handy against consigned to oblivion. All right, I like that. Put in a three drop, take out a land. Seems fine. We don't have any enchantment removal for the curse. We'll just have to deal with it. All right, starting up here. They're keeping seven, we'll keep seven as well. We've got our duelist into a frontline devastator, and they've got their signature festering mummy. But the duelist does a good job of fighting that mummy as it comes back. Cycle, cycle. Wonder if they have a big payoff card like Archfiend of Ifnir for all this cycling, or just to bring them all back from the graveyard. There's so many hours in Hour of Devastation, Hour of Revelation, Hour of all kinds of stuff that I get them all confused and never remember what 
anyone is specifically. Too many hours. Uh, I guess we just don't play the land there, but in any case, we have nothing else to do but bring back the duelist. Get the Devastator out there. Oh no, it's beginning. This is the most aggressive play. It also is the weakest against removal. But you never know, the Sparring Mummy might untap something important in the future. And th this might be an awkward draw for them. They've cycled an awful lot here. Lose three life, keep doing that. Oh, check this out. This is their worst nightmare. We've got Bloodlust and Cider cast out for the edifice. Attack for five. So <laughs> we could even do some weird thing where we give Sparring Mummy and another creature haste. Like if Earthshaker Kenra didn't already have haste, we could <laughs> we could untap Bloodlust and Cider. We could untap it and attack with it. So that's pretty good. If we layer the triggers correctly. I've never had that come up, but it seems interesting. All right. So here's what we do. Sparring Mummy comes in. We target Bloodlust and Cider. And then we target the Mummy. So good. Oh no! So they've got some kind of crazy removal. Then we we could just pump the Devastator and save the Kenra. But I don't like that here. We could always sacrifice the Kenra to Torment. Consign that thing. Uh-huh. We'll just discard the planes or whatever. Yeah, we should do this. Gets in two more damage this turn. Not bad. Then the last turn when they're tapped out, we sacrifice cast out, and they get back edifice and it does nothing. All right. Three, four, nine, puts them at four. What a busted draw from us. Oh no. All right, so they're at seven. They're still doing okay here. But yeah, looks like we win. Three, four, five, six. And then if we sacrifice the Kenra, that has haste. That would do it too. Sparring Mummy cannot block, and they take eight. Wasn't expecting to win that, but we got another Hour of Devastation draft with a white, red, exert aggro deck. Nice. Alright, thanks for watching and good luck in your drafts.